Hey guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go, and today we're gonna to be checking out the Ingenue Optimo 16 to 40, running it through some optics test. We're gonna look at if it's par focal, we're gonna look at flaring, breathing, bokeh, as well as some sharpness and edge distortion. For a camera, we're using the Ari Alexa Mini and we're shooting in 4K. If you wanna jump ahead to any of the tests, all the times will be linked to in the description below, as well as the rest of our camera settings. So let's get right into this first test, checking if this lens is par focal. So to see if the lens is par focal, what we're gonna do is zoom in, get focus, and then zoom back out. And then we can zoom in and out a couple times just to make sure that it locks focus through the whole zoom range. And this lens does that, so it is par focal. Next up, we're gonna look at flaring. This is at 16 millimeters at a T2.8. You'll notice right at the beginning there were some red rings around the outside. We'll see them again in a second. But you also get this really nice flare, which is very similar to some anamorphic lenses. And you can also see a ton of elements in this lens with all those reflections coming from the light to the center of the frame. I'll just let this play out as the light goes around the outside of the frame, and you can check out all of these different reflections and flares coming from the light. Now we're gonna go back to center. You can see those red rings again. And now what we're gonna do is put the light outside of the frame and do the same thing. So the light going all the way around the outside edge. Looks very similar. You can see a lot of those reflections again. And as you go towards the corner, it cuts off a ton of those reflections. You can see a big red one in the left side right there. And again, just going all the way around the outside of the frame. Not too much different from when the light is inside the frame. You do get a couple little bursts here and there, like right there, you see a little bit of magenta in that light, and then it dies out into the corner, and then it comes back as we go back towards the center. Next, we're gonna jump to a flaring test at 40 millimeters. We're still at a T2.8, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. This light was a little bit bright here, so it's kind of hard to see the flares and the reflections and the elements, but you get a little bit of the idea. Again, just going around the outside of the frame. A lot of different colors. There's, you can almost see a little bit of a rainbow in the flare. And then going to the outside of the frame, here we're getting a lot more flaring than we were with the 16 millimeters. And then again, some of those bursts as it hits right on the edge and then coming back up to center. Next, we're gonna look at the breathing test. So this is at 16 millimeters and we're gonna rack focus from close focus all the way to infinity. And where you wanna look for breathing is on the side. So if you look at the wall on the right side there, you can see it creeping in a little bit, but it's very well controlled. Again, we're looking at it at 40 millimeters and this lens has very little breathing and I was really surprised with it because it is such a wide lens. And normally you'd see that more on the wider focal lengths. Next, we're gonna take a look at some bokeh. Here we are at 16 millimeters and the focus is at two feet, which is the minimum focus for this lens. And I'm just going through the aperture range so you can see it from 2.8 all the way stopped down to T22. Then we'll zoom into 40 millimeters and now we're focused at three feet away. And we're gonna do the same thing going from T2.8 all the way to T22. And this is where it gets pretty interesting. You see almost a swirling around the center and you get some kind of odd shapes, some ovals, and then it even gets into like hexagons because there aren't that many aperture blades in this lens. And the last thing that we're gonna look at today is the edge distortion and sharpness. Here we are at 16 millimeters and we're just gonna pan back and forth. Uh, at 16 millimeters, there's definitely some distortion. You can see my face starting to get stretched out towards the side, but it does stay sharp across the whole frame. And this lens does seem to be rectilinear because straight lines aren't curving. You're not getting that fisheye look, which is great to have on a wide angle cinema lens like this. Then we'll jump into 40 millimeters, still at a T2.8, which is wide open. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna pan right. And you can start to see a tiny bit of stretching on the very edge of frame, but there's not much. And again, it stays sharp across the whole frame, just like I would expect it to. So 
So that's gonna be it for today. If you guys wanna learn more information or try out the Ingenue Optimo 16 to 40 for yourself, head on over to lensprotego.com. The link will be in the description below. If you guys wanna see more lens tests like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for new videos every week, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you